Welcome to this video, where I will show you how I connected my Belgian smart meter to Domotics. When I started this project, it was my goal to get a better understanding of the implementation of the smart meter in Belgium. Understand the inner workings of the P1 port, and this on a limited budget. I didn't want to invest in a, in a very expensive item or device that, I, uh, that works as a black box and that I could connect to my smart meter nor did I want to pay a subscription fee for this. So what I did is I started searching and I found the code of, uh, of Jan ten Hove on GitHub, who has created an Arduino sketch that works for the Dutch implementation of the P1 port. And I had to make some adaptations to make it work in Belgium as well. Also, I found a ton of instructions on the domotics.com website and on Fluvius. As hardware, I used a D1 Mini, not only because it comes very cheap, eh? it's only about 6 euros, but it uses 5 volts, which came in handy, it has a wireless adapter built in, it's built on the ESP8266 architecture, on which Jan ten Hove's code is based as well, which made it a very interesting bargain. So to get up and running, I followed a few steps, and I, in later in this video, I will go into detail into each of these steps. Uh, but basically, I installed the Arduino IDE, I installed support for the D1 Mini board, I installed two libraries, Soft Serial and a Cyclic Redundancy Check Library, and then I started working and customizing the Arduino sketch. Because there's only a few customizations that need to be made in the sketch to make it work in your Domotics implementation. You change the network SSID and password, you link to your Domotics implementation and to the devices that you configured for gas and uh, electricity, and off you go. During the configuration of this environment, I created a cable with an RJ11 or RJ12 plug. And here you see that I only used three wires on that uh, RJ11 plug. This way, when uploading the code to the D1 Mini, the D1 Mini was powered by the micro USB connection via the PC. This gave me the advantage that while the RJ11 plug was plugged in to the, the smart meter, I could read out the serial console messages via USB. The messages that come from the, the P1 port look as follows. And this is a typical telegram message or a typical serial, serial console output that you can see when the program is running. What you see here is that there's a, that there's a telegram and each and every telegram typically starts with a forward slash and ends with a line with an exclamation mark, after which the CRC is being shown. When a valid CRC is being found, the correct parameters are being sent through to Domotics. When you want to get a better understanding of how such telegram message is built, I refer you to the Fluvius website. Now here you see all the parameters and the definition of those parameters um, and how they work. When my program was ready, I created a second cable. And in this second cable, I used an RJ12 connector, uh, typically having six pins, six copper pins instead of four, where I also connected the first and the sixth pin. When using this cable, I didn't need a micro USB connector anymore to power the D1 Mini separately, but then I just needed this RJ12 plug to have this D1 Mini powered by the P1 port of the smart meter. I didn't test it out, but I think when you power the D1 Mini via the P1 port of the smart meter and in parallel also power it via the micro, micro USB plug in the D1 Mini, I don't think it will like it. So uh, be cautious when, uh, when working and switching cables. So when I created those cables, and certainly when I created the cable only with the three wires in it, I could start working with 
my code. And the, the code I, I created or I altered from Jan ten Hove it can be found on GitHub as well. Uh, again, this is 99% Jan ten Hove's uh, realization. I just updated some values to work on the Belgian implementation of the DSMR protocol as well. Because what is different? In the Belgian implementation, you see that the daytime and nighttime production and consumption identification has been swapped around as opposed to the Netherlands. Also, the gas identification is different in Belgium versus the Netherlands. And what I saw as well is that the max line length value in Jan ten Hove's code generated a lot of invalid CRC messages. Uh, when I started testing with his program, I increased the max line length value and, and now I'm not getting these error messages anymore. Now, in the second part of the video, I will go with you in detail on how I set up my D1 Mini to work with the P1 port and to send data to Domotics. In the second part of the video, I will go with you in detail on how I set up my D1 Mini to work with the P1 port and to send data to Domotics. First, we will need to download the Arduino software. And we do this from the Arduino website, where you can download the software for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And in this example, I will install the Arduino IDE on MX Linux. Once the software is installed, you just open it and we need to configure it to work with the code that we will be using. We need to add support for the ESP8266. And we do this by going to File, Preferences. And in here, we will need to add an additional Boards Manager URL. By default, this will be empty, but here you can add one or more lists of different board types, uh, apart from Arduino, that you want to enable in the system. And this URL so needs to be added so that Arduino ID can download that, those ESP8266 board configurations. Once this URL has been added, you go to Tools and then Board Boards Manager. And here you can just enter ESP8266. And it will be shown. And from here you can install the support for ESP8266 boards, which has already been done in my case. Next to that, we will need to install two libraries. The first library is the soft serial library. We do that by going to sketch, include library, manage libraries. In here, we can install additional libraries to enable certain functionality. And the first one is the soft serial library, where I can search for in the search field. Soft serial and then it will show me the old soft serial library from Paul Stoffregen which I installed already as well. Last but not least I need to install a third library the CRC library to do the cyclic redundancy check. That library I get from or is part better of the GitHub repo that I created. So on my GitHub page, you can download the code by downloading the zip file. Once downloaded, you unzip the zip file. And in there, you will see different files. And you see the, the, the presentation files of the presentations that I shared with you, the Arduino sketch, and the CRC16.h file. This CRC16.h file, you add that to the Arduino libraries folder in your Arduino installation. On Linux, this is slash home slash username Arduino, Arduino libraries. In there, you should create a folder which has the same name of the library, so CRC16, and please, use the same capitalization as the file itself and in there you store the file 
or you store the library. Next to that, you should also save the Arduino sketch, so Belgian Smart Meter to Domotics.ino. You save that one in the Arduino folder and in the same subfolder or a subfolder with the same name as the sketch itself. So I create the sketch or a folder Belgian Smart Meter to Domotics folder and in there I saved the sketch. Now, when opening the sketch, I can easily modify it and change it to afterwards upload it to my Arduino. Here you see the sketch and normally the only values you need to change are here. And you need to enter your own network credentials, your domotics configuration, and so the IP address and the port, indicate where the or what the ID is of the gas and the electricity device, and that's basically it. Maybe just to show you how to add devices in domotics to refer to in here, to add the gas and electricity devices, you first go to setup hardware and you set up a dummy device. You do that by creating dummy hardware. When the dummy hardware exists, you can create virtual sensors. By clicking the button Create Virtual Sensors, you can choose a sensor type. And for the electricity, you choose the P1 Smart Meter Electric. And for the gas device, you just choose Gas here. And you give it a name. Afterwards, under your devices, those two devices that you created will pop up. And it is the ID number in the IDX column that we will need to complete the sketch. Later on, you will see that in the data column, at the moment that the D1 Mini is operational, that these data items are being filled with information that is being pushed straight from the D1 Mini, straight from your smart meter. So once all that information has been filled out in the Arduino sketch, we are ready to upload it to the D1 Mini. First, of course, we need to connect the D1 Mini via micro USB to uh, the computer. And then via tools, board, we need to make sure that the correct board is selected. And in my case, it's going to be a Lowland Wemos D1 Mini. When the D1 Mini is connected via micro USB, this menu item port will become active and you can select the USB port to which that device has been connected. Afterwards, you can just choose Sketch, Upload. And once the sketch has been uploaded, you can connect the device to your smart meter through the P1 port, make sure that it is powered, either using the three-line RJ11 plug and separately powering it via micro USB, or using the RJ12 plug, which has the, the, the 5 volt power included in it. And you should see the messages pop up in your domotics environment. I just want to give you a view in my live environment what it looks like receiving data from my smart meter. So here you see my two devices, the smart meter for electricity and for gas. And here you see all the data from the smart meter dynamically coming in. And here, at the, the data or the, the power consumption value, you should see it update frequently to indicate the current power consumption in my house. So wrapping up, thanks to Jan ten Hove, I was able to link my Fluvio smart meter to Domotics, just making a few changes to his code. You will find all the links to all the information I refer to in this video uh, below, underneath this video. And please don't hesitate to leave your comment to let me know what you think. Thanks very much. Goodbye.